For this demonstration of wind chill change management, we'll be logged in as Pat, a product manager for Polaris Snowmobile Products, working on a change to the standard fuel system subassembly. First thing we're going to do is go up to the search bar, type in our part number, and open up the correct version of the standard fuel system. We're going to be walking through a full track change process for this subassembly. So that includes the problem report, the change request, and the change notice. The first thing to point out here is as soon as we open up the standard fuel system, right at the top center of our screen is this little red triangle. This is an indicator for any user looking at this standard fuel system that this object is pending a change. On the left hand side of your screen, there's also another alert that says go to latest in a red text box, giving us a quick way to go back to the current version of the standard fuel system. Going back to our change process, first up is the changes tab, a one-stop shop to see all the change objects. For this standard fuel system, we have the problem report, change request, and change notice, but every organization is different, so not all change objects have to be used. Some organizations will start with just a change request, others go straight to a change notice. We will walk through all these various workflows as part of this demonstration. Although the workflows vary, all work to standardize your processes and make sure that all the tasks, reviews, and sign-offs are going to be routed to the right people and places. For our first example, we're going to start with the problem report. This is the initial documentation identifying the issue that was found. First thing we see when we open this up is a description that tells us exactly what this problem is. Two fasteners missing, and the bomb needs to be restructured for manufacturing. Looking further down the problem report, there's space for supporting content to verify the issues. These could be links, documents, or annotations from Crea View, which is a free universal CAD viewing tool that comes with every seat of Windchill. You can use it to open up the product data you manage in Windchill, take measurements, review annotations, and add comments. Down here, we have our affected objects, which are the items that are going to be impacted by this issue, which are the standard fuel system M-bomb and the two missing fasteners. And then scrolling down a little further, the change objects are listed down there that are related to this problem report. Moving into the process tab, you'll be able to see members. These are the users who play some specific role in this problem report. We can see the tasks in this problem report and the other change objects. And then even below that is the workflow for this problem report. Going back to the details tab and scrolling to the bottom of the page back to associated process objects, this is my change request and I can open that up directly from here. And immediately, same as the problem report description front and center, telling us exactly what the issue is. The difference between the problem report and the change request is the problem report tells us the issue that was found. The change request is saying we've acknowledged that there's a problem, now we need to review what that problem is understand the business justification and the technical justification for making the changes and how we want to make those changes happen. Everybody that's involved in this change can review the affected objects and any associated annotations and documentation. And in the process tab, we can see the unique workflows, unique users, and unique tasks in these different change objects. The members in this change request are slightly different than the ones in the problem report. The reason is that in this change request, we have a change review board, which is a group of users who are responsible for reviewing everything that goes into this potential change and determining if a change needs to happen. So it wouldn't fall on the shoulders of one person. It would go to a whole board of people, and they would collaborate and work together to either approve or shut this change down. If approved, then it's going to immediately kick off the third and final object in this change process, which is the change notice. Just like when we move from the problem report to the change request, we can access that right from the details page of our change object, the change request. The change notice is our third and final change object, and this is where we're actually committing the personnel and the resources and the changes are officially happening. Now, there's unique information here in this change notice compared to the previous two change objects. You'll see the change summary. And this includes all the different objects that we have that are going to be included in this change process. They could be WT parts, they could be CAD files, they could be assemblies. 
If you look at the life cycle state of each one of these, they're all released. And that's because this is the previous version that we're already looking at before they're going to be changed. So technically, it's the current version. We already know that change is happening, and it's going to, for the sake of the demo, get approved. As we move forward, those life cycle states will automatically change. That's baked into the workflows that we use in Windchill. Moving into the implementation plan, this is not part of the previous two change objects, and this is where the people are actually going to be doing the work. So if you come in here, you can see tasks that are going to be executed as part of this change notice. They can be executed in tandem, they can be executed sequentially, and they would potentially automatically be sent out as part of your automated workflow. But they can include their own unique information, and we can assign a sequence to them. In this case, let's say you have to revise and update the fuel system design before you create the manufacturing bomb and the process plan. So we're going to create a step-by-step -step process in which these tasks actually need to be done. If I go to the process tab, this information is going to look pretty similar to what we've seen before. The users might be a little bit different, but what we want to show here is in the routing and process history, we can look at the change notice workflow at a high level. Each change object can have its own unique workflow, and these workflows are utilizing the out-of-the-box workflow templates that Windshield provides. We can see all the different objects, the different conditionals and deliverables, and if you look at the bottom left, you'll see a little green box which represents our progress in this change process. And we still have a little bit more work to do. The change itself has been completed, but we're going to have to do our final audit of the change before officially releasing it. To start the audit, we'll look into each one of these tasks and see what Dave, the design engineer, and Mike, the mech -E, have completed as part of their tasks. Coming to the first change task, here's all the affected objects. They're all in process. The lifecycle state has automatically changed here. They were all released previously, and a lot of them are now in production change. Going into the process, you'll see this is the same information as what we were looking at on the change notice providing traceability into the change notice and all the tasks that are making up the execution of that change notice. Looking at the second task, there's a description at the top saying exactly what needs to happen as part of this task, who's going to be in charge of completing the change, who's going to be in charge of reviewing the change in the affected and resulting objects. So this is our before and after. For this task, we've created an MBOM starting with the standard fuel system version 8.3. We've created an MBOM that also includes unique objects within it, which is expected when creating a bill of materials that's configured to manufacturing. Expanding this out, you'll see we created a few different manufacturing parts. A lot of these are brought down from the design bomb or the engineering bomb. If you look at just the first four there in the structure, bun seat, base seat, board seat, the screw and washer are all from the design context. But I've created the bracket kit seat and the phantom fuel tank as unique manufacturing bomb parts. However, most of the objects in there are also brought down from the design context. So we have the associativity between those two, but also now configured it to represent the manufacturing processes and the information that they need to see. So we've reviewed all of the information, and now the last part of the job is just to come in here and officially complete our task. For this, I'll go to my task and open up the task assistant. This is a convenient little tool we have to keep you on track and give you quick access to either the change task or the change notice itself. Looking at the impacts is where I'll get complete visibility into all the different objects in Windchill that are related to this change. Everything here looks pretty good. Here's my MBOM. If I'm auditing this, I want to take a look at that. I want to see how that's changed versus the EBOM where we started. Another great audit feature is the comparative part structure utility. With it, we can do a side-by-side -side stack up to compare where we started and where we're at now. I can see from the design bill of materials compared to my new manufacturing bill of materials what the differences are, and if there's anything that really sticks out to me, or if everything looks good, if everything looks good, then we're okay to go ahead and complete the change. One other nice thing about this is not only does Winchell use the structure and color coding in black and blue to identify the similarities and differences between these, 
but I can also see anything that's really standing out using the visualization at the bottom. Everything looks good, so let's pop open our task assistant, go back to my audit change notice task, and I can say I've reviewed everything. So let me throw a comment in here. We can go ahead and complete this task. Great job, everyone. Everything looks great. Throughout each step of this process, we had total visibility into everything that went into each one of those change objects and how they were related to one another. And we could quickly maneuver between the actual change object itself and the information that was being changed. Now for the last step, if I open up that manufacturing bill of materials that we created and look at lifecycle state, everything went from production change to released, which is a promotion that's been baked into our workflow. So we don't actually have to go in and do that manually. As we complete our tasks, it will automatically update the lifecycle state for us to reflect the current status of all those objects. Thank you for taking a look at this demonstration of windchill change management.